Hello everyone, good evening, I'm Isaac. I'm originally from New Zealand. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with Clojure now full time, exclusively almost for uh, more than three years. Um, I really enjoyed that. It's a great language, I find, not, uh, not so much because of all the technical details, but it's because it lets you uh, focus on what you're building and gets out of your way. You don't have to worry too much about you know, syntax or um, the ecosystem or the libraries, so, you know, everything else is really good or good enough to get the job done. So let's build really awesome software just focusing on the problem at hand. Um, now having the uh, benefit of working in Singapore uh, with my colleague here, Nihal, and um, we work on games. So we're Clojure 1.9 just came out, which is exciting. It's finally here, took a while. And uh, one of the big features in Clojure 1.9 is Closure spec. This this uh, up the top here. It's a new namespace closure.spec.alpha, uh, which is idiomatically named as S for short. Um, and there's some other uh, namespaces that got added, like spec.gen.alpha for generators, um, and spec.test.alpha for running tests from generators made from specs. Um, it's called alpha but most of it already works and it is in the stable version 1.9. So if it works for you, you can start using it today. Um, so first I'll go through how you would have done it previously and how you might change your workflow to do it with spec. Uh, so with poker, you obviously have different hands, You're trying to get the best score and um, you want to score a hand to know how good your hand is or how good the player's hand is in the game. So a flush, it's just a function that takes a hand and it counts um, the distinct suits. So, um, and then if there is one suit across the whole hand, it's flush. So how you might test that uh, previously. So before closure 1.9, say we like to represent things as just plain data and closure, you know, in uh, Java you might create a class with methods on it to represent this, but in closure it's idiomatic just to have a, a vector or array of uh, vectors that represent cards in a hand. So uh, this is a five card hand and each vector is just the suit and the rank of the card. So that's three of diamonds, five diamonds, nine diamonds, so on. So. If you were to test that the flush worked with um, previous testing, you'd probably write out this data structure by hand into your editor and then write some test functions to test that flush um, called with this data structure that you've written out manually is true and then, but it's false for a straight. And you'd run it probably by, um, Blow this up as well. Ah, oh, it's already referred, it's handy. So that's true. You can see uh, just running a test that it, when you call flush with that data structure, that's true. And with a straight, it's false, saying it's true that it's false. So the tests both pass. Um, in this case, both tests result in true. So that's awesome. The tests pass. So we can put to production. Or maybe not, because we know that uh, often you miss things that you don't think of. Like maybe um, you didn't try every possible combination of card hands that exist in poker and there's one that's scored incorrectly and uh, since in the implementation details of how you wrote your um, flush function, return the wrong value and then people get the wrong experience in the game. So with generators, um, what you can do is you can specify how to generate a data structure 
by, especially when the property is the industrial, like this is a vector of so many items and it contains numbers in the range of, um, if we go back to the data example, in the range of two to 15, because um, I didn't use uh, letters to represent ace and joker in this, I just used numbers. Uh, and a keyword of diamonds or clubs and so on. Um, and you can actually get generators to produce these automatically, like a random sample of possibilities. So it might test 10,000 combinations or however many possible combinations um, there could be for whatever data type you're working with. And the advantage with that is you're never going to write 10,000 tests manually and uh, in your editor, no matter how good you are writing tests, um, you can't possibly try that many variations. So it often finds something that you didn't think of. So with spec, a closure spec is just a way to define the shape or the appearance of data. So you can use it for other things other than generators. It's uh, top too big to go into a lightning talk and a uh, size of two vector. And then we just define a hand as uh, multiple cards. It's a simple example. You also go into more advanced um, functions once you get into it and you can specify the max, night count, min counts, um, optional keys of maps, required keys, things like that. It was uh, just a basic, um, Example of how it works, and then for here you can even define like a player with the keys of name and hand, um, and a, possibly a score. So, with that card uh, defined there, if we go s conform, which checks if a value conforms to a spec, uh, and we pass in. Um, diamonds. Ah. So the thing here is why the resolve is uh, specs are fully namespaced keywords. So it's actually in the other namespace that I'm editing, not in the repo namespace. So you have to fully qualify it with the namespace at the front. <coughs> So that returns closure spec invalid because it doesn't conform by having a rank. Um, it doesn't return nil or false because nil or false are conforming values for certain types. And then uh, if you pass in a valid card, it returns the actual data itself. So spec can be used to check in that sense that the shape of a data type matches what you um, what you expect. Then you can even create a generator from that spec with S Gen. Uh, so say poker card. And that will automatically generate random cards that conform to that spec. Or if you want a hand you just pass it in the hand spec. You know, and being a simple example, it's just a random length, but you could confine that more down to five. Um, and these are all in the valid range. They're all valid keywords. So every time you run that, it's going to give you a different hand of cards, not just one fixed hand that you've put in your, in your test. So what you can go and do specifications um, with spec is that you can automatically um, run tests against a function with a large range of possible values that conform to those specs. So if I was um, to run this against the flush function, it would get all these different hands generated like 10,000 times or however many you want to run it for. Uh, and it would print out the values for which that failed. So you specify the shape of the input data and you specify your expected output um, based on the inputs for the function definitions. That's done with uh, another function in spec called uh, fdef.
Um, so it just takes the symbol naming the function and three keywords, args, ret, and fn. So args, um, show you the example in the code. This is a very simple one. Again, uh, takes what a uh, spec that can apply to a list as if you were to um, pass to apply to a function, to call a function. So you can say it takes a hand and it should return a boolean. Um, then the other keyword which I haven't put in here is fn. It re receives both the input and the outputs of the function when it's called at test time. So you can specify some constraints within the function between the input data and the output data that conforms to the specs you've, you've, uh, you've made in your, in your tests. So when you run this with a test runner, um, it'll dump out if any of these specifications about the inputs or the outputs or the relation between the inputs and outputs of the function have failed across a whole range of sample data. So that's uh, about all I have time for in a lightning talk. But I just uh, encourage you to go check out the spec guide on Clojure website, clojure.org. Um, it's a good place to get started. Uh, it actually has a cards example as well. Um, slightly different. And um, I think for certain use cases, this can really find a lot of problems. You normally wouldn't find your code. For others, to be honest, it can be more effort than it's worth to write the specs, i found. So uh, it can take a lot of time for little returns. You really have to judge based on um, the kind of function you're testing, whether it's uh, going to be useful in your use case or not. Any questions? Okay, thanks. <laughs>